Hey y'all, how we doing? Shout out once again to Bear Nation for tuning in to another episode of the Bear Necessities Podcast. I am your host, Rob Napoli. The Bear Necessities is a podcast where we sit down with entrepreneurs, ecosystem partners, and innovation folks to talk about what it takes and means to launch, create, and scale business across the world. We talk about the journey and the challenges of being entrepreneurial minded and how that translates into your journey giving you the tools and knowledge to overcome challenges that you may be facing in your life's journey. The Bear Necessities is part of the Rise Up Media family. We thank you for tuning in. Now, let's get into the show. Bear Nation, how we doing? Um, This episode this week is a lot of fun. Uh, I had a first time guest on, Carl Murray. Carl and I have been circling each other for a while now. Carl uh, ran Founders Boost uh, in Newcastle as a co-director uh, while I was running uh, the New York City chapter. That's how we first kind of got on each other's radar. Uh, and a few weeks ago, I was on his podcast, Founder Sessions, uh, which I linked in the show notes. You should check it out. It was a great episode. Uh, he's a great podcast host, and uh, I love what he's doing with Founder Sessions. Uh, Carl is a startup nerd since 2019. Uh, he's got a passion for the startup life, for podcasting, and for supporting local ecosystem. So much so that he has really developed um, his passion of creating a founder community through his podcast, through being an ambassador for Startup Grind Newcastle, uh, where he helps the chapter host and promote variety of events um, in the Northeast of England. Uh, but he's also a co-founder of a company called Perch it, an ad tech startup that brings product engagement to product placement. And so in this episode, we really covered... <clears throat> a lot of ground uh, with kind of his background um, and what he wants to accomplish and, and the importance of building that value at an hour, the importance of um, getting into the space and the importance of kind of learning as doing uh, in his early career. He was kind of thrown into a role that uh, was more than he could chew and he learned a lot from it, uh, which led him into uh, being a co-founder, which led him to wanting to get involved um, and really be a part of the wider ecosystem that that is out there for startups. And then, you know, finding his place um, in that ecosystem, being able to de- deliver and give a lot of value. He's really passionate about giving back. Um, so I think this is a fun episode to listen to, um, understanding how to create a founder community and, and hearing Carl kind of talk about his journey and his why into building it. So check it out. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. I uh, don't want to miss it. And then, uh, make sure you go check out his podcast, Founder Sessions, after you listen to the episode. Thanks, y'all. Let's get into it. How are we doing, everybody? I'm your host, Rob Napoli, and today's episode uh, is going to be a fun one. Um, I have a guest calling in from up in the north of England, right, Carl? Right in the corner um, in the northeast, yep. <laughs> <laughs> up in the northeast corner, up uh Technically, it's what Gateshead, Gateshead, Newcastle, yeah, 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 Newcastle. Well, so as I was saying, most people probably know Newcastle over Gateshead, but uh, Carl Murray is a uh, founder himself. He also has his own founder session podcast that I was on um, an episode of not too long ago. So go check it out. I'll link that in the show notes. Uh, but and he's also an ambassador for Startup Grind Newcastle. And Carl and I met. We were. It's interesting how we met through Founders Bruce community um, and, and then staying in touch from there. And then kind of our worlds have collided uh, from somebody I met at Web Summit who um, Carl knows from the community in Newcastle. So it's kind of like nice, unique thing. And so Carl and I have been circling each other and following each other and 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 going back and forth on Twitter. And finally, I was like, yo, my guy, like, we need to get you on Bear Nation and one of the things that I love doing here, and I think you're like my sixth guest, that this is your first guest appearance on a pod. So I want to give you some love. Carl, say what's up to Bear Nation, my friend. Yeah, what's up? Um, yeah, first ever time being a guest. Um, I think I said the other day, I was in an event this week and I was speaking to someone and I said, you know what, I'm feeling a bit nervous, you know, which I shouldn't be. I speak to guests all the time, but now I'm in the hot seat. Feeling a bit nervous, Rob. Feeling a bit nervous, but never mind. Yeah, (laughs) great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. Um, And I I, I love having first-time guests on. I think it just makes it so authentic. And 
I'm excited to see you on the other side of the microphone, so to speak. Um, and, and this is, you know, what I wanted to cover today is um, you're somebody who I've been following that's really, um, you know, we, we hear it a lot, right? This, this building community and that came out during the pandemic. Community was like a hot button thing. Everyone started a community. Everyone started a Slack group. There's things like Rev Genius and uh, Salescast and uh, Marketing Ops and all these different like communities. And it got really heavy um, in terms of just like Thursday night sales. And it's like literally there's an event or a thing you could do every day and it got really heavy. So as we're coming out of it, you really started developing community on the back end of this of like as we come back out, what does community mean? So why don't you tell us a little bit about just kind of your overall background? Um, we'll get into the community piece and then your company, but tell me a little bit about your background and then we'll we'll dig into the community of what you're building up there in, in the Newcastle area. Yeah, sure. So um, my journey really started in 2019, um, two months removed from university. Um, I rejoined a company that I did some work experience for. Now, this company was a creative media studio, did everything from uh, animation, video to virtual reality projects. And that's really where I came in. At university, University of Teesside in Middlesbrough, I studied games design. So I was very much, you know, that game nerd kid, um, did that all throughout college and then in university. So my sort of talent, would you say, got picked up by Justin, who was the, the founder of this creative media agency. Um, so I came involved and I think we sat on, on, on my session with you is I got thrown very much in the deep end. Um, yeah. I was given the illustrious title of head of XR and most people watching this would be like, what is XR? Well, XR is just that big term for virtual reality games, AR, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, very nerdy stuff, but we love it. Um, so I was doing that. So I was managing teams, speaking to clients, um, and because it was small, my skills kind of went elsewhere. I, within the company, I was doing overseeing like video projects, that sort of thing. So very much overall project management. Um, mm-hmm. There's actually a funny story in there that I, um, we had a French client and he was asking why we should use Facebook. So I was just handed over the phone. I was trying to sell this guy why he should use Facebook for his for his office spaces. So that was a bit interesting, a bit, uh, bit out there. And he, uh, I never closed the sale. He was adamant that he wasn't going to use Facebook. So that, that was my first fail. Um, so that back into 2019, things were going well in the business. And Justin, who I said was my boss at the time, he had this idea. And essentially what that idea was, was buy things from shows while you're watching them. That's mm-hmm. essentially, that was the idea. And he gave me this 40 page PDF and I I have it in the drawer next to me. And it was just a a brain dump of ideas and pictures from movies. I think there's a picture in there from like Fight Club. Um, There's Ikea advert screenshots in there. Interviews, just a random collage of just, you know, off the dome sort of thing. But in there was the idea for what is now Purchase. Mm -hmm. So coming out of 2019 and early 2020, you know, the, the world kind of shut down, you know, COVID hit, um, the business lost a few clients, understandable. Um, but we, because we were small scale, we, you know, that was our living. That was our, you know, our monthly income. So that took yeah. a huge, huge hit to the point where at the point we had no clients and that was, you know, big problems. <laughs> so we just decided to go all in on Purchase. And essentially what Purchase is, it's advertising tech, we're making um, product engagement to product placement. You know, see the shirt that Rob's wearing, pull up the purchase app, scan it, get it. That's that's mm-hmm. the process. So we were working on that during COVID, you know, very new to this entrepreneurial game, sort of learning what all these different terms means and people talking about unicorns. What are unicorns? They're just a mythical animal, <laughs> aren't they? Um, but we... We went through it and we did quite well. We got some grant funding in, built our MVP, all the the usual stuff that an early stage startup does. Mm -hmm. But it felt pretty lonely. And that's sort of when the community element started to come in. I started to look into my community to see what was happening. And there wasn't very much. Um, Yeah. COVID was happening. There was a few events online, but they were more focused towards your traditional business, should you say. 
not really yeah. startups. And then we had a guy in the business called Mark. So Mark was also involved with Founders Boost and I helped him with the Newcastle program of Founders Boost and the UK program of Founders Boost. So that was such a great opportunity. That's where I became aware of Rob and his aura and what he means. Um, you <laughs> yeah. run in the NYC the chapter. Yeah, chapter yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was awesome to see. And that's when it really struck a chord with me how big this is. Because mm-hmm. I think early stage entrepreneurs, they get very t- they get a lot of tunnel vision. They don't really yeah. see beyond that. They just see their team, their product, what they're doing. And we were very much like this until this opportunity came up and I saw, oh, there's people in Dublin doing this. There's people in New York doing this. People in LA doing yeah. this. Holy, you know, <laughs> it's, it's bigger than yeah. I expected. Yeah. So that is really where the startup bug caught me, this community bug. And I looked back into my own community and there was still nothing there. So going through 2021, you know, sort of connecting with the people that I'm at on Founders Boost, connecting with the the players, I would say, in the in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really until 2022 that I really found my tribe, essentially. And I came in the form of Startup Grind. And yeah, so I became a Startup Grind ambassador for the Newcastle chapter. Um, Two directors that I had met previously, uh, Tam and Patricia, and uh, became an ambassador with Hamish, who's now a good friend. And that's all because of community, which is awesome and beautiful to see. Yeah. And yeah, the the podcast as well, which is just my want to meet new people and build a sort of a network in the community. So that was yeah. very long winded. I do a lot of stuff. Um, if I could sum it down, I'm a bit of a nerd that likes to meet new people. So yeah, yeah that's that's I mean, that's the journey in a nutshell. I, I find it a little fascinating. I mean, you know, you out of university and the company that you had worked for during university hired you um, pretty quickly to take on a role that many would say you probably weren't suited for. Um, but at the same point, like that's like the biggest testament to, you know, having somebody that believes that you can take on more than you can chew a little bit and allow you to like learn. And so you got a year experience in being a, you know, we call it an entrepreneur, but an entrepreneur within another organization and developing style and these things. And, and, um, I think that's really cool. And it kind of led you into, okay, everything's slowing down. This is about agency. Um, what can we do with this and what do we do next? And so Founders Boost was a great opportunity for you to get into program management and learn about the wider startup ecosystem, which allowed you to start this company, Perch It, which I think is really cool. And I know you've got some cool things that you're building kind of underneath the surface. Um, I know, you know, part of it's not, I would say not stealth mode, but a little stealth mode as, as you develop the product um, on the back end. And so it's like, okay, we're developing, we're building this thing and this company, we've got a little bit of work to do before we could take it. What do I do and how do I stay involved? Because you're right, being an entrepreneur and a lot of founders can fall into the trap of just being very tunnel vision. It's hard to meet others. You're working from home or by yourself. And you lose out on just the the natural human connection uh, that you get working out of uh, out of an office or a bigger team, and so that's where startup grind and founder session kind of built out. And you know, we all talk about these needs for communities, and I think what you're doing is not necessarily building a quote unquote community. It's how do I engage in communities and tie them together to create my network so that I can expand and grow globally. So you know, young buck from Newcastle, England, who now has a global network in a way that you didn't even imagine possible a couple of years ago. And you and I talked about this a lot on my episode that I realized the need for a network. And and that's why I wrote my book when I went to Italy. And so you're kind of doing this all virtually. Um, What do you think has been, what do you think has been the coolest experience in starting all this by joining Newcastle, um, start of grinds, uh, Newcastle, uh, group, uh, doing the podcast, launching the startup. Like I know there's probably a lot of things, but what do you, what, what sticks out in your mind is like, this was very, uh, a very big moment for me. Great question. And I think 
from the startup grind aspect, I'll start with that one first. Um, it might sound very lame, but seeing people actually turn up to these events, you know, seeing new people come into the room mm-hmm. and uh, I spoke about it with um, Hamish on the, the podcast I had with him. It's having that inquisitive mindset, being like, who is this person? What do they do? Where have they been? What's their journey? You know, it's just learning about new people in your ecosystem and mm-hmm. then thinking, how can I help this person? How can, how can I give back? How can I spare some of my time to help that person? And mm-hmm. I think that's really beautiful. Just from seeing them walking in that room to now being someone that I could, you know, shoot a message off to saying, I know you in this space. Have you dealt with this problem before? How did you do with that? You know, and I never had that before. So that was beautiful to Mm -hmm. see. From the podcast point of view, um, the feedback has just been amazing. Um, I've got something in the pipeline with the podcast, which I feel just elevated. I can't really talk on it much, but it's it's partnering with someone that'll, you know, expose the podcast to more people. And that's just purely through people talking about it, you know, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just some people coming up to me at an event and say, oh, your call from uh, Founder Sessions, a podcast. You know, I was like, yeah, thanks for, you know, checking it out and all that sort of stuff. But again, it's that community aspect. It's a human aspect. Yeah. And from the from the startup side with my own startup purchase, it's when people say that's a good idea. Because I think as, as early stage entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, you kind of, you get so much feedback and it's great feedback. Um, sometimes it's it's feedback that makes you think or maybe slightly pivot or something like that. Sometimes it's just negative feedback and we all get it and it's how you deal with mm-hmm. that. But it's when you get that feedback that is constructive, it's, it's valuable, but it's also just good, honest feedback and people say, we like it. And then they give you some tips on it. I think that's, you know, that's a really that's a good feeling when someone cares about it and cares about it enough to, you know, give you some feedback to go on from that. So yeah, yeah there's a lot in there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that a couple of things that really, I think are, are, are unique is, you know, I, I, I agree. When people show up to events, that are new and you see a community grow, what you're building grow, I think is really um, impactful. I remember when I first did my, my first webinar, um, in my first clubhouse room, I think like three people showed up and it was kind of like, fuck, I thought my network was bigger. There'd be more. And then the next time I did it, you know, six people and the next time nine and then 20. And it was like, okay, like that feeling of seeing it grow and that people are talking and it continues to like come around is that's where you get excited. And one moment for me was there's an accelerator I work for and two companies in the last cohort joined because of me and my network, and my podcast, um, one knew my network and applied to it because they saw the podcast episode with them. It's like, Oh, I should sign up for that. And the other one's like, Hey, I was like searching them. I heard them on your podcast and like knew that I wanted to join. And it's like, okay, now it's like coming full circle, right? When, uh, people are hearing your stuff and seeing the value added into it. Um, and starting to grow that becomes exciting and feedback is gonna, feedback loops are important. Right. I think um, you always get positive feedback and, you know, feedback is something you take with a grain of salt because no one's going to know it like you do. So you take it. It's like, hey, great idea. I want to implement that. Hey, completely understand what you're saying. But like, I I just I'm not going to do that. Right. These different things. And so um, I think that's where you start to really um, tie loops together and it becomes impactful. So as an entrepreneur, you know, who's only been in the game a little while, you've you've ran a program. You're an ambassador for a program, you have the podcast and you have the business. How do you manage the different things that you're doing? And I, I got this all, all the time. I think we talk about this a lot, you know, offline, yeah. but I, I really, I, I think it's important to talk about how do you balance these things and how do you prioritize them in your life? Yeah. Great question again. And really it comes down to having a good solid foundation. And what I mean by that, having a good people around you. So my team of Perchett, Justin and Katie, you know, they, they understand that I like to do this as well. I like to give back. I like to do the podcast mm-hmm. and they're good with that. They support that, you know, they, you know, they rally around that when I want to do that, but they know when it comes to crunch time and I need to be in there, 
as um, chief of operations, I'll be in that room. I'll be in that meeting. So it's it's having that, I think it's trust. You know, they trusted me to do my own thing and they trust when it's go time, I'm there. Um, same with the Startup Grind stuff. I A lot of the visuals that you see for Startup Grind, I've, I've created them for the team. You know, so it's just balancing your time. And I think when it what it comes down to, Rob, I think if you really love it, it, it doesn't feel overwhelming. I think if you really want to yeah. make a difference, it doesn't feel overwhelming at all. And I say this to a lot of people that say, say oh, well, I can't manage too, too much things at once. Because you can, if, you, if you're truly passionate about something, you will yeah. make that design for a person. You will have a meeting with a founder. You will jump on an investment call. You will make time for the things that you love. And uh, that's that's what I put it down to. But at its core, at its very micro level, it's having that good support network and team to, yeah. to allow you to do those things. Yeah, I think um, prioritization is a big key of it. Is And, and I actually, I, I take a step back. Communication. You know, you've communicated to your network and to those that your business partners um, and the different things that you're doing I'm doing these things and here's how I'm balancing out and here's what I'm available. And then you prioritize like, here's what I'm prioritizing for this company. Here's prioritizing for the pod. Here's what I'm prioritizing for um, startup grind. And when you communicate that transparently, and this, this is really hard. It's a lesson I've learned the hard way. And, and I'm going to ask you of this um, is I used to say yes to everything and figure it out to the point where I'd let people down and that sucked. And, you know, I've learned how to say no more and set clear expectations on what I can and can't do and then pass off things to others and say, Hey, I know I could help you. would love to, but I can't, I, I won't be able to do what you need me to do right now. Yeah. Right. And if you can have that communication and transparency, that's where you win and then you prioritize. So have you ever, you know, as you've gone in this early, in these early days, kind of managing all this at the same time, have you had any, times where you felt overwhelmed and you took on more than you can chew and how did you how did you manage that or what did you learn from that on the back end yeah so there was a a few things that really came to a point where it's like this is a bit too much um and it was around uh, my mother's health so you know if anyone watching has had like uh, a family member that's been poorly for a long stretch of time you know how much of a a mental and physical strain that can have on you. So that was a big one. Trying to balance, you know, events for Startup Grind, get guests on the podcast, be involved with investment meetings for purchase while, you know, going off for an hour to see if my mother's okay. That becomes a lot. And it's there's some days you wake up and you just like, you know, I don't want to do this today. I just want to shut down from the internet and just take care of my family. But you kind of can't do that because as entrepreneurs, you you know, sometimes you're living day by day, you know, one day could be a very, very great day. The next day, you know, you know, hills and valleys mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, the big one is always being around when a family member has been going through something. Um, but you, you kind of just, I know it's bad for you mentally, but you kind of just push it to the back and then you deal with it in your own time, in your own way. Yeah. And that's what I did. And again, it comes back to your support network. Talk. Yeah. Because if you don't talk about these things, they're just going to eat you away. And mm-hmm. I've done that, you know, from a very young age, you know, my father was in and out of my life and that sort of stuff. So I always pushed that memory to the back of my head. Mm-hmm. But it's no good there. It just eat you away. And I think yeah, that's the main thing. If, if you're going through anything as an entrepreneur, personal, professional, you know, talk about it, you know, talk about it with, as you call it, Rob, your, your, your board of personal board of invest um, advisors, you know, mm-hmm. speak to them about it. Just get it off your chest because, yeah, that overwhelming feeling and that feeling of, I just don't want to do this today. You know, that could lead to, I don't want to do it today. I don't want to do it tomorrow. I don't want to do it this yeah. week or next week. It just builds up and builds up. And it's, I've seen it a lot, you know, people talk yeah. about burnout Burn, burnout's yeah. real. Burnout sucks. Yeah. Um, Somebody so, who's yeah. gone through and have been burnt out multiple times in my life um, to a point where <laughs> there was one time um, I was, 
working, burning the candle at both ends, working all day hard. And then I would stay up late. Um, like I'd work till kind of late. And then I would stay up late, even later playing video games. It was right when Call of Duty came out. And so I'd play every night till like 2 a.m. But then I'd be up at like 6.30, like starting. And I remember it, I was just like going, 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 building a lot of stress for the business during COVID. And I basically got to a point where I was sleep deprived and took too much caffeine. And I was out for two days where my, like everything was spinning and I needed to flush my system. And like, I had to shut down. It was really tough to take two days off in the middle of a week. Um, so I think that that key message is really important that you need to kind of find your way to deal with it, but talk about it. Right. Yeah. And it's okay to take a day if you need to take a day and just like, Hey, I'm going to take today to recharge with the idea that I'm going to get back at it. Like you can't take a day and say, I just don't want to do it today. So I'm going to take the day off. It's like, I'm, I need a mental day. Yeah. I'm going to take the day to recharge, but then tomorrow I'm going to go get X, Y, and Z done. And it has to be taking the day to recharge, to refocus versus like, I'm just going to take a day because I don't want to do it. Cause if you just get into that trap, then that happens more and more. Um, and that's tough when you're an entrepreneur, you know, the mindset's a little different when you work in a corporate job and they pay you every two weeks, like whether you, whatever you do that day, like you go in and you're going to get paid for that day. Right. Whether you are super productive or not, like as long as you're kind of getting your stuff done as an entrepreneur, there's days where you make zero money. Like you go through a whole day of stuff and you might've had eight meetings and not a single revenue dollar came out of it. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough to, tough to handle. It, and it's like, it's, how do I keep handling these things? So it's important to, prioritize and manage. And then when you're dealing with things, talk, I think, uh, the big thing for me, um, when I was younger and I, I'm glad that you're seeing this now, but when I was younger, I had an ego and I didn't need help. Now I do. In fact, I have a business coach. I, as a coach myself, I, I coach entrepreneurs, um, and founders and actually CEOs of companies that are not even startups, growth stage companies, but I need a coach. I need somebody that can I can talk to you, somebody that understands. And I have my personal board of advisors that I can talk to. Um, and I think that's really important that you need those people in, in your life and that community and that value added network around you that you can, can can kind of work through things with. And learning that at an early age, I think, is really important uh, as it took me a lot longer uh, to realize that it's yeah. OK to ask for help. Just to add to that as well, it, it's it's not like a community that's or even friends that say, it's going to be okay. Tomorrow's a new day. It's friends that, you know, no holds barred will tell you how it is and will humble you through those days. I think that's so important. Uh, my best friend, she lives in St. Louis and she's just the, the, the one I go to when it, times are tough because she tells me how it is. It's like, you need mm -hmm. to find those people because those people are the ones that will keep you grounded, motivated and get you through those yeah. dark trenches so <laughs> yeah. you need those people that's awesome they have that and also i love that she lives in st louis i'm you know i'm from kansas city missouri my brother my twin actually um works at southeast missouri state which is an hour south of st mm -hmm. louis or hour and a half and then my brother-in-law actually is a chiropractor in st louis um small so world even, again. Even, the world is small <laughs> even in <laughs> your best friend and where my family lives um you know one of the things that as, as you being a younger entrepreneur and just starting your journey here in the last couple of years, what is, we talked a lot about um, feedback and talking to people. What's kind of like a hot take about entrepreneurship that you think is contrary to popular opinion that you've kind of learned about um, in this process of, of being an entrepreneur and, and going through um, this, this stage of growth in your life? So very early on, we chased a lot of people for advice. You know, we were trying to get advice from everybody on anything. Mm -hmm. And it comes to a point where uh, too much advice is a bit too much. You know, you've, you've got to focus on other things. I think a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs just chase, you know, the voices from people. And sometimes there's a thousand voices and you, you know, all them a thousand voices, they may have good things to say. They may just be saying it for saying it, but it comes to a point where you need to say, okay, I'm equipped enough to push forward. You know, mm -hmm. too much advice has its pros and cons, 
but for us it had a lot of cons we were we were chasing a lot of people for that advice and it just got to the point where it's like we're hearing the same things just from a different voice so yeah. it comes to a point where you just need to think okay I, I feel confident enough in myself i think it was just a confidence thing you you, mm-hmm. you know you're chasing that sort of praise and you know that sort of stuff but i've got to the point where it's like okay we just need to start this now we just need to yeah. keep doing it so i think people will say go get all the advice in the world that you need some for some that'll be what they need but for others it becomes a bit much lots of voices yeah. lots of different opinions and that me personally it kind of just became a bit too much and it's like okay we just need to go now we just need to yeah do our thing um yeah i think yeah advice has its pros and cons it's just how you filter yeah. that out um yeah so that that'll be i think it's important to to understand that um, it's good to seek out advice and feedback, yeah. but also understand that there's a lot of people talking and know where they're coming from and take it with a grain of salt and filter that out. And, you know, there's a lot of people now that talk about the startup life and startups and they're, the advice they're giving is not for pre-seed and seed stage startups, it's for series A growth stage companies. And we don't delineate well between what is a startup, what is a growth stage what is a scale up and what is a company. Yeah. And so if we're giving advice, like startup advice, and it's really like series A, well, if you're listening to that and they're telling you, well, you need to do this or hire this, it's like, well, no, 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 I don't. I don't even have the money for that. Like sometimes you just need to know who to listen to and when. Yeah. And and also I tell people when I coach them all the time or I give advice, like, hey, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Like this is my background and this is what I can speak to and like what I bring to the table. But I don't know you or your business well enough to like, tell you absolutes. So you need to take it and figure out how it fits into your plan and if it's relevant for you or not. And it's okay for you to tell me to kick rocks and be like, Hey, thanks for your time. Appreciate your insights, but I disagree or I are, I agree, but I want to do this thing. And that's okay too. You just need to know and have that confidence in yourself that go search for advice. But at the end of the day, the decision is yours and yours alone. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us are always looking for an out so that we didn't fail on our own. It's that maybe, well, my coach said this or somebody said this and I should try it and that was the wrong advice. So now I failed. So it's easy to kind of pass the blame. Yeah. At the end of the day, we gotta look in the mirror. Decisions that are made are yours and yours alone. You get advice and you get feedback to help you make the best decision possible, but you have to look in the mirror and know the decisions you make are yours alone. And when you understand that, it gives you the confidence that you need. I think, again, learning that at an early age is, is super, um, important. So Carl, what do you think, you know, as you've been growing and as you look at what's next, what do you think your, your superpower is? So over the time, I think, uh, it, it, again, it sounds lame, but listening, just listening to people, listening to founders on the podcast and really picking out what their problens are and listening to people at network, networking events and listening to what they're doing. So then when it, it comes time to, you know, go back into your network asking for help, you know they're going to be the right person because you've listened to them. You've you've took the time just to, you know, meet to shut up and just let them talk. I think mm-hmm. we live in a an age where everyone wants to sort of have a voice and, you know, want to say their opinions better than their opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes you just need to, zip it and listen to the other person because yeah. you learn a lot about someone by listening <laughs> you know as, yeah. as basic as it seems it, it's it's quite yeah yeah and it's a skill we always talk about and we always like oh listening is important especially in sales but like really really listening is tough to do and you're right everyone it is trying to be the loudest and sometimes taking a step back and just listening and figuring out how does this fit into what i'm doing and being genuinely curious about what they're doing and how they're doing it so that you can pull out those nuggets of wisdom is a skill many people have a hard time really developing so i love that as a superpower yeah and for the community aspect as well there's a lot of great events happening but sometimes you think did they really speak to the entrepreneurs do do they really know what they want did they listen to them because i made a joke the other day at an event there's an event that's being pushed around about space and like how you can be a startup in space and stuff pretty cool 
awesome space, you know, space is wonderful, but it's going to be- Final Frontier. Yeah, Star Trek, Star Wars, all that thing. We're going to find aliens, man. <laughs> um, but it's very niche, you know, it's been promoted like for everybody. It's like sometimes entrepreneurs just want to know how to raise the next round or how to build a team, yeah. you know, the simp- the the basics of entrepreneurship. Um, but yeah, I think, I think listening to whether it's your team, your network, community, people at your events, just listen. Cause if you don't listen, you're just going to be putting on events. You're just going to be passing on information that might not be useful to your audience. So I think, yeah, listening is, is key. I love it. And, you know, when you look at your, your experience, right, we've been talking a lot about advice and listening um, to young entrepreneurs out there, entrepreneurs that are um, wanting to maybe take the leap or be an entrepreneur, what would you, what advice would you give them? What would you say to them? I would say, be honest with yourself. Um, let's say you're coming out of university or you've got an idea. Just sit down and be really honest with yourself. I you, you, do you want to commit five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is to this idea that you have, or are you just chasing a quick win? I think if you're honest with yourself and really plot out what it is you want to do and, mm-hmm. and almost have them as goals, I think if you're honest with yourself and set those goals, you'll be more prepared and you'll stick to those values throughout. I think if you just come into this thinking, oh, you know, I've got a great idea. I'm going to raise loads of money. I'm going to be a unicorn. I'm going to cash out. I'm going to sit, you know, in the Caribbean, sipping cocktails in five years. It's like, be honest with yourself. The ones that you see, the Gary V's, you know, that ilk of top tier entrepreneur, that's just the, the smallest tip of their iceberg. Yeah. You know, you've got to see below the surface and see all the 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 shit that they've been through essentially and yeah so yeah. just be honest with yourself is it simply ask yourself do i want to commit myself to this and if you can yeah. answer that with confidence go for it <laughs> love it i love it so i mean there's so much i know we could get into but i know we're running out of time so i'll ask one more question here when you look at the second half of 2022 you've got the different, yeah, perch it, start up grind, and founders, uh, sorry, founders, founder sessions on your plate. What are you most excited about in the second half of the year? Not for each one, but just like in general, as you look at the things that you have going on, what are you really excited about for the second half of 2022? What's going to make Carl um, just jump for joy and feel like the second half of the year was successful if X, Y, or Z, or you're looking forward to this? Good question. You know what? I haven't really thought about it. I kind of live week by week, but I think to really end the year on a high for me would be reflecting on the people I've met in 2022. Reflect on the people I've met in 2022 and see how I can help them and how that help has made them progress. Mm -hmm. And if one comes back to me and says, you know what, Carl, you helped me this year. That's a that's a gold star for me. That would make me happy leaving this year for the next year. Um, Love that. Yeah, just seeing who I can help. Uh, I think it, uh, Give First is such a big, it's a pillar for Startup Grind. It's a pillar for many, many organizations and people around the world. Just Give First, see what you can do. Bit of advice yeah. here and there. Just help somebody. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So, I mean, essentially what you're really excited about is, is if all these loops continue to tie together and you've made an impact on at least one person uh, that for you is going to be a big W. And I think that what you're going to realize is that you've made an impact on multiple people through uh, building startup grind through building the founder session pod and the conversations you have in the episodes and what others get out of you asking questions and giving a space for that. And then I think ultimately for your business um, and perch it, it's going to continue to grow in a way that it needs to because you're learning all these lessons and tying all these things together. So I think that's a great, a great way to end um, 2022 for you. And, and it will be a great reflection. And then to also just see how your business has scaled and grown in a way that you, you can then say, how do, how do I, how do I leverage this and how do I 
do better in 2023 is going to be a, a, a great conversation to have with yourself over a cup yeah. of coffee uh, this winter. So uh, my guy, I know we could talk for hours, but um, how can my followers, how can Bear Nation find you, support you um, and tune into your content? Where, where should I be looking, my friend? Yeah, so feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Always happy to make new connections. If you want to check out the podcast, it's foundersessions.com. Uh, you can find all the socials there. You can find where the podcast is, and you can also connect with me directly through there. Um, from a startup grind perspective, you know, wherever you live in the world, just go on startupgrind.com, check out the chapters near you, and get involved in events. Meet some new people and make some awesome things happen. So, yeah, that's me. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure to link um, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, uh, the website, and the podcast. They'll also have the link to our episode uh, that we did together. So people want to check that out and hear Carl on the other side of the mic and hear your boy in the hot seat. Um, Carl, appreciate you for jumping on. I had a blast getting to have you as a first time guest. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully the okay. nerves disappeared um, and you enjoyed the time here. So appreciate you being a part of Bear Nation, my friend. Thank you very much, Rob. All right, Bear Nation. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Uh, if you're, um, you know, if you're a tier one and a one and been riding with me, um, unsubscribe and resubscribe, it actually helps, um, uh, ramp it up. So unsubscribe, resubscribe, um, leave me a review, five stars, put some words in there. Let us know what you think. All that's going to go help us raise. And then do me a favor, go to my man's podcast founder session, give that a subscribe. Uh, there's some great conversations in there. If you like this content with Bear Nation, you're going to love founder sessions very similar goals with what we're trying to um, unearth about entrepreneurship and what that means um, and how you can learn about different parts of entrepreneurship. So go check out my man's podcast. Give it a subscribe um, as well. Till next time, Bear Nation, thank you so much. Stay well and rise up. Bear Nation, once again, thank you for tuning in and listening to the Bear Necessities podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Leave us a review. It really does help and means a lot to us at the show. And I want to thank our friends over at Finn. Finn is a social good platform that creates employee engagement and builds culture. It's our mission to support and give back to the communities that we serve around the world. And we do this by giving every guest on our show a $10 donation to the cause of their choosing using the Finn platform. Until next time, Thank y'all, stay well, and rise up.